couple of days ago, I received an email from Cosmopolitan announcing that Bourgeois would no longer be selling in the UK. And here I quote, this is what uh, the article from Cosmo said. Hold your healthy mix foundation extra tight tonight because today, cult makeup brand Bourgeois confirmed that they will no longer sell in the UK. In a statement provided to Cosmopolitan UK, Coty, who owned the French brand, said the difficult decision was made in order to focus on priority consumer brands. And I quote here, we can confirm that following a strategic review of Coty's consumer beauty brands in the UK, we've made the difficult decision to exit Bourgeois. This will allow us to focus to a far greater degree on our priority consumer brands. So Cosmo also says that the move comes in as UK makeup sales are in decline, partly, and I quote, due to an overcrowded market and a surge of new celebrity brands launching. Let's talk about this. Bourgeois a brand established in 1863. I first heard about them because my mom loved their pot of rouge products. She actually wore one of their blushes, one of their pots of rouge to her wedding. She wore a Max Factor foundation as well. Uh, when I was growing up, I wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to wear a Max Factor. You know, I actually wanted my mom's teachers to teach me my, uh, um, to wear the same makeup my mum wore, that sort of thing, read the same books that she read, do the same things, have the same adventures. Probably not very healthy, but you know, I no longer want to do that, don't worry. The Pots of Rouge are probably Bourgeois' most famous product. So how did this brand begin? I'll talk about that as I show you these products. In 1862, actor Joseph Alba Ponsant created a skin product that would whiten the skins of stage artists. Uh, in the theatre uh, to replace, you know, the greasy stage makeup that they had back then. You know, it was greasy and it was uncomfortable. So he first started selling in his house and then he became more popular and then he started with his own shop. At 28 Place Vendôme in Paris, he established his own shop. At the time, it was not called Bourgeois, obviously. It wasn't called Bourgeois until he hired Alexander Napoleon Bourgeois in 1867. In 1868, the business was sold to Bourgeois and then, you know, it acquired the name Bourgeois. So, Pots of Rouge, Lush. This one is the shade Rose Door, Rose Gold, and is very, very lovely on my skin tone, if I say so myself, and does not accentuate acne scars. And that is the limited edition uh, packaging there. In addition to that, they also have the iconic Healthy Mix Foundation that comes in a range of other products, Healthy Mix Serum Foundation, Healthy Mix Concealer, which I don't have, the Healthy Balance Powder Compact. So slowly they started selling beyond theatre, you know, they, they moved beyond theatre, expanded, you know, within Paris, 1879 word spread, and, you know, a Java rice powder was created to lighten the complexion, actually, and, you know, to leave a velvety matte finish and one that still has you know modern editions this is their Poudre de Riz de Java the same Java rice powder I mean not the same thing that they had in 1879 obviously this is a modern edition and now it doesn't lighten the skin as such that's a powder I'm gonna swatch it very quickly it doesn't lighten the skin as such what it does now is leave a velvety finish as you can see it blends to my skin without lightening or whitening it however this is the 150th anniversary edition of that very same powder as launched back then so this is what it says here for its 150th anniversary bourgeois reinterprets its legendary java rice powder an ultra fine velvety texture for a smooth and radiant complexion made in italy this one was very lovely product if you don't have this powder to get it before they stop selling in the UK altogether. Very nice, uh, much nicer than all those highlighter products that are out there. So it wasn't until 1881 that the Pots of Rouge became baked, you know, as was the case with the one that I showed you a minute ago. So th those were at the time in little round cardboard pots. There was no plastic at the time, obviously. 
And then they decided that, you know, demands increased and they decided to up production. So in 1891, a factory was created right outside of Paris in Pantin. And in 1897, Bourgeois sold 2 million of these around the world, 2 million of the Java rice burgers. Um, it wasn't in 1897 that I bought mine, so you can't count to me among the 2 million. Now, in 1898, enter a family that you've probably heard of. Now, they, they lead a very reclusive life, a very quiet life. Um, they own a very iconic brand, but you won't you know, hear much about them. When you hear the brand's name, you think of Karl Lagerfeld. It is Chanel. And the family that I'm talking about are the Wertheimers. So in 1898, Ernest Wertheimer bought the business, bought Bourgeois. By then, they had more than 700 different items for the cheeks, for the eyelids, these powders, nail polish, lipsticks, those mascara tablets. My mom used to have one. Apparently, it belonged to her mother. Uh, you know, you had this bar of cake and then a brush that looked like a miniature toothbrush, and you had to mix water, and that was your mascara. I don't know how on earth people lived back then. In 1924, the famous Mon Parfum was created for Bourgeois. Uh, it was created by Ernest Beau, who also created Chanel No. 5. So imagine, Bourgeois was owned by the same family who owned Chanel, and they had the same perfume as Chanel. What a place to be. I, now, at the time, the packaging of bourgeois products, sadly, I don't have any of those. 1924, even my grandmother wasn't born then. Possibly even my granddad wasn't born then. Oh my God, who was born then? I don't know. <laughs> my great-grandmother must have been a young girl at the time, or a little Chinese. So, I don't know anyone who would possibly be owning this. So I can't show you these products. In 1924, the packaging of bourgeois products reflected uh, the stories of a fictitious young character named Babette. So there were more than 200 titles, you know. Babette exterminates some statues. Babette in trouble and Babette and the reluctant fiancé. Hmm, that last one sounds very interesting. Now, it wasn't until 1924 that Soir de Paris or Evening in Paris, the most iconic, most famous perfume was created. It was one of the most popular fragrances in World War II. It is very collectible, the bottles from those days. Sadly, I don't have one, although my mom collects uh, booty-based antiques. Incidentally, during World War II, an evening in Paris was uh, supposed or believed to, you know, hold morale high. Now, in 1938, right before World War II broke out, Constantin Vedigin was hired as perfumer. During the war, he was conscripted uh, and sent off to work at a chemical plant, and after that, he resumed his work at Bourgeois. And when the Nazis arrived in Paris in the 1940s, in 1940 to be precise, the then owners, Pierre and Paul Wertheimer, fled to New York. They sent an American, Gregory Thomas, back to France in order to retrieve the formula for number five and also the main ingredients. Incidentally, it was this Thomas, the American, who helped Pierre's son Jacques to, to escape from Paris and reach New York where his father awaited him. And the reason they had to retrieve the formula and the ingredients was because there was an ongoing lawsuit uh, with Coco Chanel over you know, the rights of uh, Chanel Number no. 5, the rights of manufacturing Chanel Number no. 5. But that is a very different topic and we won't go to depth here. Also during World War II, during the Battle of Britain, during the bombing of the Croydon Aerodrome by the Luftwaffe, Several workers in the bourgeois factory nearby, near the Croydon Aerodrome, were killed. So, you know, this is a brand which has been through a lot. Another bourgeois employee rose to fame in 1956 when Janet Myers, working for bourgeois in New York, argued in court that cosmetics must not have excise tax imposed upon them since men's grooming products did not. So she was asked why in court, why uh, you know, women had to wear lipstick, they didn't need to, so she immediately retorted, well, so men can all grow beards, they don't need to shave. Nice woman, but... So, so as I said, this is a brand which has had a lot of history, the historical significance. However, it was in 2014 that the, the, the group Koti Inc. decided to buy uh, bourgeois from the world famous for 239 US dollars. Incidentally, Koti also owns Rimmel, 
and uh, Max Factor. We haven't actually seen too many very exciting recent launches from either brand, have we? They also own CoverGirl, but we're talking about um, Max Factor and Women specifically right now. So they've recently purchased 51% stake in Kylie Cosmetics. I wonder how that's going to shape up. So the little round pots, both eyeshadows and blushes became so popular that by 2017, Bouchard was selling 6 million of those worldwide in a year. So what went wrong? What caused this? Is it as uh, Cosmo says, because UK makeup sales are just in decline? Is it as Cody says, because, you know, they want to focus on priority brands such as Kylie? Is that what it is? Or is it something else? I'll tell you what I think. This is Bourgeois Air Matte Foundation, a wonderful product. This is actually more of a, a somewhere in between a CC cream and a foundation. Beautiful, ideal for oily skin, one of the nicest foundations I've used. It has six shades, six shades, six shades. All right, I'll stop saying that, promise. When the Healthy Mix Foundation launched, this is not the Healthy Mix Serum Foundation, it is the regular Healthy Mix Foundation. Uh, the Ideal Dupe, First Year Lotus Devil Wear Staining Place from a drugstore. Wonderful. Again, six shades. This is not enough. These days, the consumer wants more. These days, Fenty Beauty has 50 shades. Lancôme had 40 or 50 shades. Huda Beauty, 40 shades. So many brands have 40 to 50 shades these days. Pure Cosmetics has 100 shades, 100 shades. So, when and and you know not all of them are pale pale or unpaleless you have shades catering to every skin tone these days and this is where bourgeois failed appallingly this very few shades so no inclusivity there and that i think has been one of the biggest failures from bourgeois another thing this is the rouge edition velvet lipstick this is the rouge edition aqua lark lipstick and then you have these amazing little booklets they look like chocolate they smell like chocolate this is a bronzer and this is a highlighter spice chocolate i could be doing that all day and night and never get tired these were very exciting launches from bourgeois but what can you think of over the last two years the bourgeois has launched that has been this exciting go on tell me I think that so many brands, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you should pull an Anastasia Beverly Hills and launch 15 palettes a year or 20 palettes a year. But, you know, Urban Decay, Naked Honey, that was the latest. Um, Too Faced Gingerbread Spies, I believe. Um, Gerla, the Golden Land collection. Off the top of my head, Bobby Brown had that kaleidoscope palette. Bushwa, can you remember what's happened this year? What's come out this year? Anyone? See, I think that with so many brands launching a plethora of products, Bourgeois has not been, I don't know if that is Koji's decision or, you know, just lack of creativity, but there haven't been too many launches that are exciting ones. I think other drugstore products definitely launch more products. Indie brands launch more products than this. Regular brands, high-end brands, those owned by big groups, they're all launching products. Bourgeois, can you think of one product that launched in the last one year that's been exciting? Last two years? No, you can't. So that, I think, is the second failing, apart from inclusivity. Failure to keep up with other brands' launches. Failure to bring out exciting launches to the table. I mean, the customer has bought the bronzing powder that comes like this. They want to see something new next year. So... You have nothing to launch and you're going to be forgotten. You're not going to be a relevant name anymore. So I think to become, to remain relevant and to keep your name out there, to, to remain in public memory, you need to keep launching products consistently. And it doesn't have to be 20 eyeshadow palettes a year. You can just do, you know, two collections a year, spring, summer, autumn, winter, holiday. This hasn't really happened for Bourgeois. We haven't really seen that. So I think that's another big, big, big reason. And then add to that the coming of so many indie brands, so many smaller brands, Kylie Cosmetics, Profusion and Meld Cosmetics, so many of those, you can't just keep up. 
It doesn't matter if you were launched in 1863. No one is going to bother with you unless you remain relevant, unless you become inclusive, unless you adapt, unless you bring sustainability to the table. So there's lack of diversity, lack of inclusiveness, lack of excitement, lack of relevance, lack of new products, lack of what is needed. Um, these days, you know, it's not just about foundation, concealer, eyeshadow and uh, lipstick. There's so many other products, there's contouring, there's setting sprays, there's highlighters of a million kinds, there's illuminating primer, there's hydrating primer, there's uh, mattifying primer, there's uh, concealing primer, goodness knows what else. And uh, you have to be meet customer demands today. For instance, if dewy looks are in, then you need illuminating foundations, illuminating primers, bases, highlighters, luminizing products, luminizing setting powder and so on and you can't just have one foundation out there the healthy mix and its variants and you know the rest uh, on your laurels they did have though the one two three foundation which i will be finishing shortly a very nice product but you know i think off the top of my head i can just think about four foundations from bourgeois in all and there are so many brands these days at your heels waiting to get that prime real estate in that shop and on that counter on that website even so this is where bourgeois has fallen short sadly it is very sad because not only is this a brand that i have grown up loving that my mom loved that i love i adore the rouge de velvet lipsticks very very much and if you can get a good uh, shade match the ld mix foundation very very iconic product full range of shades though as i said the bronzing powder is wonderful even their lip liners very very nice quality so this is very very sad but it wasn't entirely unexpected i feel and i don't think that bush was the last brand to go along this path i don't think that a brand like rimmel or barium will last or hang around for much longer unless they change matters seriously for instance Rimmel had a mousse foundation a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, I think it was four years. I wanted to buy it, I couldn't get a shade match in it, it was all pale, pale or a palest. So with that being the case, you know, I'm going to be taking my money elsewhere, obviously. So unless these brands change, cater towards Kintons rather, they're going to go the same way as Bourgeois. So very sad, 1863, a very old brand, an iconic brand identifiable by their pots of rouge historically significant they've been through a lot they've been through a world war two world wars actually i don't know much about what happened to bourgeois in world war one i'd love to see you know a book out the war tamers are an incredibly uh reclusive and private family and but but you know if they do write a book that would be amazing on the history of bourgeois i'd buy it definitely and they had some lovely lovely gifts with purchase you know trousseau boxes and notebooks and nail stickers and one second nail polishes which i love those one second nail polishes were brilliant and they came with those thick brushes so one swipe you managed to cover your nail my nails are small so i did actually manage to cover my nails with one swipe very nice so so much fun but you know i think they ran out of steam i don't know how far that is to do with hottie and uh, how far the sale affected this because i don't see the word tamers eager to see one of their acquisitions close like that despite you know no matter how private they are no matter how many other interests they may have boss raising and that sort of thing they would have i feel that they would have kept up with the launches and the innovations and post 19 post 2015 post the acquisition of bourgeois by culture this is when the launches have dried up i feel i mean inclusivity was a problem before that but, you know, the launches, the innovation drying up, because how is a brand that comes out with something as brilliant as the Rouge Edition Velvet Lipsticks going to run out of ideas, uh, you know, a couple of years later? So I feel that Koji hasn't really been paying attention to this acquisition of theirs, which makes me worry about the future of Rimmel, about the future of Max Factor. Max Factor, has anybody even heard of Max Factor these days? What are they at? Where are they at? Do they exist anymore? I, I don't think Max Factor is... Well, it's a pity my mom wore their foundation to her wedding in the 1980s no they shouldn't close that's very very sad i mean obviously i have no intention of wearing a max factor foundation to my wedding uh if and when it does happen i will probably be wearing i don't know uh, a money power fabric no um mac nc38 no I, I don't know i really cross that bridge this isn't about my wedding this is about bourgeois i keep getting sidetracked today i don't know maybe 
this news has sort of taken me aback a bit. I can't really focus on one thing. Um, I'm very, very sad. I'm incredibly disappointed by this. It wasn't unexpected, yes, but it's still sad when it happens, you know. So what I would like to see is if Coach is no longer interested, they're pumping money to Kylie Cosmetics and things like that, for, you know, somebody else maybe to bid for Bush for and, you know, pep it up a bit and reintroduce it into the UK. It's not just the UK, incidentally. Bush will stop selling in so many other markets where they used to sell, which is a huge pity. So I'd like to see maybe a new Parafai's fresh uh, blood. It just uh, revivals are possible. So. Hopefully they will revive because we'd love to see our Rouge Edition Rubber lipsticks and if they do come back, hopefully they'll come back stronger with diversity, with more shades, with more inclusion, with catering to people of all skin tones. That would be lovely. So what are your thoughts on bourgeois folding? Are you familiar with this brand? What is your personal history with the brand? Uh, what, why do you think they're folding? Do you have another opinion? What do you think should happen next? Would you like to see them come back? What brand? do you think will be the next to go? Do you think a decline in general sale, makeup sales in the UK is responsible? Do you think Brexit has, let's not keep it political, mind you, Brexit has anything to do with it? Or do you think that uh, it's because Kochi doesn't give an ours anymore? Do you think it's because of the lack of diversity and inclusiveness, the lack of uh, product launches, the lack of relevance anymore? Is it any of that? Or is it something else? Do tell me all of that by keeping it pleasant, by leaving politics out of it in the comments below i would love to know so that's all from me for today thank you for watching this video please do give me a thumbs up please do hit the subscribe button please do ring the notifications bell and i'll talk to you soon